بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده من يهده لا فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون ثم ما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى بغينا نتحدث عن الحقيقة والحقيقة How to attain happiness and how to attain pleasure. But before, yani, subhanallah, we discuss as a believer how he attains these things. First, what is happiness? Because when you speak to different people, every person interprets happiness and pleasure to mean something different. When you speak to some people, they'll say to you, you know, pleasure is to have a lot of money and a lot of wealth. That's pleasure. That's happiness. Others would say, you know, happiness is about having, you know, a good job, having status, having position. So every person interprets happiness or pleasure to the way that they think or believe in themselves that that's what they need in their life. But we find that the majority of times when people have what we may assume to be happiness, to be pleasure, they are the most miserable people on the face of the earth. Before they had this so-called happiness, this so-called pleasure, they were okay. They were struggling, they were okay, but they wanted to achieve you know, the ultimate. And when they receive the ultimate, be it wealth, position, position, whatever it may be, you found that they actually went backwards. They got worse. They got more depressed. They got more, they got more anxious. They started worrying more. They started stressing more. Why? Because the human being, he thinks to himself or tries to believe in himself that what's popular among people would make him achieve happiness. What's popular among the ideas of mankind, that's what will make him, you know, achieve pleasure and happiness. And that's incorrect. What achieves happiness and pleasure is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed for the human being. See, what would help someone in treatment by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the right medication he needs even though that medication is unpleasant, even though that medication may have side effects, but that's what will treat his, his condition. That's what will cure him. And likewise with happiness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us what happiness is, how to attain happiness, how to become happy. But you find mankind runs away from that. Why? Because they don't believe that would actually make someone happy. For example, do you know to offer two prostrations for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worth more than this whole world and everything that it contains? The two prostrations before Fajr is worth this whole world and, the more, and what it contains. And more. So if a person thinks that this world is happiness, a person praying just two prostrations of Sunnah, we're not even mentioning the Fard, we're talking about Sunnah. Imagine the, the value of the Fard prayer is worth this whole world and what it contains. So if someone who wants happiness... We tell him, a believer, a Muslim, we tell him, as salah the prayer. The prayer is what makes someone happy. Because it connects you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also, it is beloved by Allah. Especially the salah on its time. 
It is loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Allah loves the action you're doing, Allah will love you. And when a person has the love of Allah, he has the mercy of Allah. Plus happiness and pleasure. So again, a person interpretates things differently. Sometimes we see something and we say, you know what, that guy's happy or that, that's what will bring pleasure to a person. But know that a person that has had what this person has had, be it a beautiful house, be it wealth, there are many out there that, has ha- that have exactly what that person has, but it led to their destruction. It either made them bankrupt or they even committed suicide. Suicide, you don't find among the poor and stricken and the needy. You find that among the wealth and rich. And rich. Why? Because it's failure for their heart to achieve what they feel or believe they may achieve. They thought to themselves, this will make me happy. They had all this hope. And then once they achieve it, they realize there's no happiness in it. So they've given up. So what makes a person happy? What gives a person pleasure? Obviously, first and foremost, is a person believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the right way, and the right aqidah, the right creed, and the right understanding. Because if you know who your creator is, and who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, and how your relationship should be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you would never despair. You would never despair. You would know whatever happens in your life, you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not despair, you won't despair in Allah's mercy. You won't despair that Allah will not provide for you. You know Allah is your protector. Inna ma waliyukum Allah. Your protector is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know that. You believe in that. You know Allah who protects you, looks after you. And if a person knows that, how can he be upset? If he knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is on his side. And with that becomes, comes belief, comes the teachings of Islam. And you find among the, the main things that a person gets upset about, is undermining qadr, the decree of Allah. But his belief and his connection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is strong, then whatever occurs in his life, he knows that's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is qadr, it is decreed. So he finds pleasure even through calamity, even through trials, even through tribulations. He finds pleasure. Why? It's because he understands his religion. He knows who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. He knows what Allah wants from him. He has the correct understanding. He knows the, the, the qadr. He knows the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the predestined, predestiny that is ordained upon him. He doesn't say, if I did this, this would have occurred and if I didn't do that. Everything he understands, or he understands that happens in his life, is for Allah's will and permission and decree. And he's happy what Allah has given him because he knows Allah only wants good for him. He only wants good for him. So that makes him feel pleasure. And most important, he knows that Allah is pleased with him. How does a person know that Allah is pleased with him? When he keeps his rights and responsibilities to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he tries his best. And when he makes dua, he sees Allah responding to that supplication. And this is what the Prophet sallallahu he used to say, Ya Allah, as long as you are pleased with me, I don't mind, I don't care. Nothing is important. As long as you, Allah, is pleased with me. So a person having his belief, his relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the correct understanding of his Aqidah or his creed or his religion. Number two, a person would only attain pleasure in life and happiness if he does righteous good actions, righteous deeds. The one that does these deeds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, but those that do good deeds, 
Man amila salihan min dhakarin aw untha. Allah says, and whoever does good deeds for male or female, and they are believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and will give him hayatan tayyiba, a beautiful life, a happy life, a pleasant life. Why? Because he done good actions. Remember the last time you gave sadaqah. How good did you feel? How much pleasure did you have in your heart? Think about the last time that you helped someone and that person did not know that you helped them. How much pleasure did you feel when you help someone? You slip money under their, under their door or you transferred money in their account or you paid a bill that they had or you paid their rent or whatever you, you did. You helped that person in a time of need, in a time of difficulty. You relieved the burden of him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says whoever relieves the burden of his brother, Allah would relieve a burden of him on the day of resurrection. When Allah is pleased with you. How did you feel when you did something and when a person came to pay you, you said, no, I did it for Allah's sake. I don't want nothing from you. How many times have you felt that happiness in your heart? When you're driving and you find someone that's broken down on the side of the road and you get out and you help them. And even they offer you something, you say, no, I don't want anything. How did you feel inside? How much happiness did you feel? So doing righteous actions, good actions, brings pleasure to a person, brings him closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and keeps him occupied with wanting Allah's reward. And this is something you can never do enough of good deeds. You can never. You can never do enough sadaqah. You can never do enough actions of goodness and helping. You can never do enough. Whatever you do, it would only be rewards for you more and more on the day of resurrection. The day when you will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You find sometimes again these, these days people... Yani, we don't want to undermine what depression is. Depression is nice and simple, easily defined. Depression is not feeling sad. That's not depression. Because you can feel sad. It's okay. You know, you haven't seen your mother for a long time. Someone's passed. Feel sad. That's fine. That's not depression. Depression has a nice, simple explanation or definition. People try to complicate it. But it's simple. Depression is the things that are supposed to make you happy don't make you happy. That's depression. The things that are supposed to make you happy don't make you happy. When a person, they fall into that, there could be a few reasons. One, we relate that to a medical problem. There's something Medically going wrong with that person. This type of person is treated, you know, in the medical field. But there's another type. That comes not because of a chemical imbalance, no. Because of one, negative thoughts. Always has negative thoughts towards everything that occurs in his life. Everything is negative, negative. He forces negative thoughts upon himself. A person says, how can someone do that? Just like you don't eat junk food to affect your body. You know, you avoid junk food and you only eat healthy food. Likewise, a person fills his mind not with healthy thoughts, with bad thoughts. How does he do that? He is jealous towards other people. He's envious towards other people. He doesn't like other people doing better than what he is doing. He always undermines the actions of people. He always looks towards what other people are doing. He ends up developing hatred towards others. Everything is just hatred. He just hates every person. For no reason. Or small reasons. So this type of person that's filling his mind, what's that going to lead him? It's going to lead him for, for him not being happy. Even when there's happiness there, Allah's giving him happiness. There's happiness in front of his eyes. This is when good deeds come in. 
Because the only way to fight that and to get your mind off these bad things is to build good thoughts. And how do you do that? By doing good actions too. Good actions come with good intentions. Good intentions come with good thoughts. But some people slip into the category where they end up even secluding themselves away from everyone. Because that's how bad of depression they've come to. Not because there's a medical problem. Because they've developed it themselves. And the Prophet ﷺ warned us about this type of action. Actions of jealousy, actions of envy, acts of looking down on others. You know, acts of asking why, how come, why not him, why me. And make sure the person has the best car, the best house, the best job, everything, but he's not happy. Why? Because he's too busy looking at those above him. Where the Prophet ﷺ said, look at those that are less fortunate than you. Why? So you appreciate the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The blessing of Allah. And know that whatever a person has, even if he doesn't find happiness in it, Allah will question him about it. You find people that have everything, but they're depressed. Happy, what are you depressed about? Nothing's making me happy. You didn't appreciate what Allah has given you. Do you want Allah to take it away? Is it that Allah has to take everything away for you for you to appreciate what Allah has given you? Is that where you want things to lead to? So a person will say to himself, or keep on putting into his mind, bad thoughts, bad thoughts, bad thoughts. And we'll just ponder about these bad thoughts. And it's like a person feeding his body junk food. Eventually what's going to happen? It's going to break down. You feed your body good, thought, good food, therefore you also feed your mind with good thoughts. You know, when you see a brother do good, be happy for him. You know, I, I would say to brothers, if you see a brother become successful in business or whatever, in a halal way, obviously, be happy for him. He's an asset to you. What do you mean he's an asset? How can he be an asset to me? How, how is he an asset to me? Support him. Buy his product. Use his services. Why? Because what happens is one day you might be in need. One day, you might be in a situation where you've almost lost everything. And you know who may be the first person to come knocking on your door and telling you, here's some money, here's support, here's a new house, or whatever it may be. It could be that brother. That brother could be the one that may pay for your own janazah. He may pay for your burial. You may die poor with nothing. And your family members will have nothing. And he might be the person that will come and say, I'm going to pay for him. And you know what? I'm going to build a mosque on his behalf. Why? Because he was a beautiful brother. He was a good brother. He feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I remember a brother, he died with nothing. He died with nothing to his name. Nothing to his name. Why he died with nothing to his name? Because he came here as a refugee. As soon as he came here, he got diagnosed with a medical problem, a serious medical problem. And then he had liver failure. Then he ended up dying in hospital with nothing. Absolutely nothing. But do you know how rich he was? Brothers gathered up to $40,000. And put it in trust funds for his children. So his children can attend school. They paid for his children to attend Islamic schools through... Yani from kindergarten for whatever they were in, you know, year one, year three, whatever, all the way to they finish year 12. Plus they supported his family. Plus they supported his mother and father overseas. And on top of that, a brother went to Hajj for him. A brother went to Hajj for him. He died with no money, but he died rich. So these brothers, they, you know, Ahead of you to say they're making money. These are the ones that are going to help you one day when you are in need. And if you have money and you do, you are comfortable and someone surpasses you, also know that one day that person also, they look at him as competition, he would also be a brother that may support you one day. And that's how it works. Or maybe that. Allah knows if He gives you too much, you destroy yourself. The happiness comes mainly from being content. 
being happy what you have, not being miserable what you don't have. Because a lot of people were miserable from things they don't have and it never benefited them when they had it. Call a person. You know what? I'm going to give you, you know, we're in Belmore. I'm going to give you a thousand houses in Belmore here. Most people will probably end up dying of stress trying to manage all this stuff. Too much of something is not good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, al piling up, piling up, piling up, diverts you. And for some people, it's a punishment. So don't be jealous or don't envy someone. Because when you do that, again, that can destroy your happiness. That can destroy your joy. Next one. Don't keep looking towards the past. See, person always looking towards what's happening in his current situation. Don't look towards the past. Meaning, don't let the past affect your pleasure now or your happiness now. That's like, you know, a friend chasing you around everywhere you go and making sure that you're not happy. Push them away. It's not important. The past is not important. It should have no connection to what you're doing in your present day. Meaning, if things have happened, don't be saddened about it. It's in the past. And you know, in the past, when we think about things in the past, they're always worse, or we always take it more heavy and more worse than we were actually when we were actually going through it. So when we were going through it, it was difficult. But then years later, when we think about it, we actually make ourselves more upset than we were during the time we were going through it. How did that happen? Why did I do that? Why didn't I say that? Why didn't I go ahead with this? Why didn't I sign this contract? Why didn't I that? And why didn't I do this? And why, 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 why? Keeps on pondering about it, thinking about it. At that time, you made a decision. Regardless of the decision that you made, you're not in control of the outcome. You're not in control of the outcome. At all. You could have made 10 decisions and the outcome would have been the same. But at the time you made a decision. It didn't go right. That means you learn from it and next time you build on that. But you sit down and you speak to people and all they talk about is their past. In the past I did this and this happened and, that, and they get upset and they don't allow their past to make them build themselves. And their past affects their wife. Their past affects their children. Their past affects their family. And likewise, they become secluded. They don't want to see anyone. They don't want to deal with anyone. They don't want to talk to anyone. There are brothers out there that have lost inheritance. Why? Because other siblings have stolen the inheritance. And they're still living in depression. And they're still upset about it. Habibi, it's your right. It's not going to go away. You're going to get it on the day of judgment. You're going, to get it, you're going to get it back from your family members. That inheritance they took, that you're right, that is not halal for them. That is haram for them. Meaning if they took a house that belongs to you, then that house has no barakah. You know, we get scared of a haunted house, right? A house that has ghosts in it. This house is haunted or it's got jinn in it. We get so scared and we get so worried. What about a house that's cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What about a house that has no mercy of Allah on it? That's the house they're living in. But do you think Allah will leave you? Do you think Allah will do it unjustly? But why are you hanging on to the past? He becomes like a hermit. You know, he secludes himself from the whole world. He stops working. He stops everything. He just sits at home worrying about what people took from him. You couldn't control it. You didn't see it coming. It happened. Move on. Move on with your life. The people around you, they're not deserving to go through that. They don't deserve, they deserve a right-minded person. And it comes back to you because you're feeding your body bad thoughts, not from the present, from the past. It's the past. It's gone. It's finished. It's the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe Allah took the house away from you in this world so you don't become deviated and so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you a better house in Jannah. Patience. And take pleasure from what you have around you because you're still eating, you're still drinking, you're still living. 
a person he doesn't hold on to his past to affect the pleasure that he has. And there are many points, but we're just discussing يعني, some of them. And finally, a person will never attain pleasure if he does not have a pious and righteous wife. Because the Prophet وسلم, he said this world this world is a quick enjoyment. And the best of those enjoyments is a righteous and pious wife. If a person, and likewise, the same you can say, for a sister, that if she doesn't have a pious and righteous husband, you know, the enjoyments of this world is to have that, a righteous and pious husband, because, you know, الطيبين and الطيبات you know the, 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 the beautiful and righteous are for the beautiful and righteous right and the evil and corrupt are to the, for the evil and corrupt even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the, the tasteful the beautiful is for the beautiful referring to people the good people are for the good people but when a person fears Allah and is righteous and he chooses a spouse does not fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's running after the dunya and his focus is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's going to have difficulty from now to whenever Allah wills, until he's with that person. When there's no salah together, no salah in the house, there's no Islam in the house, there's no religion, there's no sitara, she doesn't cover herself, she doesn't look after herself, she doesn't you know, follow the rights and responsibilities, you don't follow your rights and responsibilities, and vice versa, there's no pleasure and happiness in this world. Because the Prophet وسلم, said the best of those happiness, the best of happiness and the best of pleasure is to have a righteous and pious wife. But you find that the righteous and pious wives or women that are available are put aside. And you find unfortunately people chasing women that unfortunately are not pious, that don't fear Allah, that don't wear hijab. Yes, they can change. Yes, they can wear hijab. Yes, they can do all these type of things. But the Prophet wasallam, he said you marry a woman for four reasons. For her beauty, for her status, for her wealth, and for her religion. These are four reasons why a person, he gets married. And the Prophet wasallam, he said, and choose the one that has religion. Yes, she can also be beautiful, she can also have money and status, but choose the one that has Religion. And if you do not, then you become destroyed. Or, yani, you, would, you, would, you would lose. Because you're going to deal with the other three characteristics if religion isn't part of it. And so a person says, how can I live a beautiful life? Have a beautiful spouse that fears Allah, that loves Allah, that loves Islam. And likewise, that will move on to the children also. But that doesn't mean that, you know what, Khalas, I've, I've made that mistake. No. Now, if that's what you've done, then you have to rectify it. How do you rectify it? By educating the wife that you have. By teaching. By going to lessons. By allowing someone. The fear of Allah comes through a simple ingredient. And that simple ingredient is knowledge. A person cannot fear Allah without knowledge. A person can't say, I fear Allah and does have no knowledge. What builds a person builds the fear of Allah is knowledge. Why? Because you learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, you learn, you learn, you learn about the day of resurrection, you learn about hellfire, you learn about the punishment, you learn about sin, you learn about all these things, and this builds and makes you become stronger in fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when you're not learning these things, then how's a person gonna fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So these are just some reminders. How a person can achieve happiness and pleasure, obviously believing in Allah, learning the right religion, doing good actions, fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, always thinking positive or working towards positive thoughts, not holding on to the past, looking towards the future, building on yourself and the relationship that you have between yourself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and having a righteous wife, slash family, slash household. Because that is the most important thing that a person can have. وجزاكم الله خير والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Al Bayan Radio, the voice of Ahl Sunnah wal Jamaah.